Have you ever had the problem that you cannot run your R code anymore that you wrote some time ago? Believe me, I've been there and it's a really annoying problem. This often happens when some version of a package that you use changes and then it behaves differently. And that's exactly where the R and package comes in. It makes it super easy to automatically document your versions as well as restore versions if that's ever necessary. And to do that, all you need is four functions. You need the init function to initialize your project. You need the install function to install packages in your project. You need the snapshot function to document the package versions. And you need the restore function to restore versions if that's ever necessary. And if this sounds complicated to you, don't worry, it's actually not that hard. Let's dive into our studio to see how these functions work in action. All right, here I've created a new R Studio project just for the purpose of showing you how the RNF package works. I've also created a new script that just loads the dplyr package and the lubridate package. Okay, just two packages that I know are on my computer. And as you can see, there was no warning message whatsoever that, well, the package are not available. Now this project doesn't have RNF enabled yet. I've just created a blank new project without using RNF. Normally when I would create a new project, I would immediately say, okay, create this project using RNF. But here I didn't do that to show you how you can even enable RNF when you didn't start with an RNF project in the beginning. So here, let me just get rid of this lubridate call. And now let me enable RNF for this project. So what I do is call RNF init, and this will initialize the RNF project for me. You can see a whole bunch of stuff happen in the console here. Basically, it just said, okay, it will link packages into the project library and resolve missing dependencies, and it will use the following packages. And it will also record the version of R that I'm currently using. You can see here that I'm using R version 4.4.1. And all of these things are written into what is called a log file. And while this sounds complicated, wow, a log file, it's actually really, really simple. It's nothing fancy. If you look into the files, you'll see that you have a new file in your directory, which is called rnf.log. And in there it is a file in a JSON format that will first describe the R version that you're using, namely the 4.4.1 that I have. And it will also describe the repositories that I used. Here it will just say that I'm getting all my packages from CRAN. When you do use this in an organization, like in a company, then you might have some private repository here. Doesn't matter, the point is that in the first part of this JSON file, the R version is documented and the source of where the packages are coming from is documented. And then for each package, you will find some information on the package name, the version number, where it's coming from, and some other requirements each package has. So as you can see, this is nothing but a list of packages and their dependencies that you need to use. And the reason why so many packages are already listed in this empty project is because when I initialize a project, RNF will scan all of my files, which in this case is only this one, and it will see the plier is a dependency for this project. I need to record this in my log file, but if I want to use the plier, I also need to use a couple of other packages as well, and these are all the packages that are dependencies of the plier. So basically this is what happens when you use rnf in it and you could do this in a text file you will just using a json file it's just recording which packages and which version numbers you're using oh by the way in case you don't know me my name is albert rapp i'm a mathematician and data scientist and i help other data scientists with typical data science tasks using r if you enjoyed this video do me a favor and hit that like button or even better leave a comment i'm always happy to hear from my audience and with all of that said let's get back to the video it can be confusing if you want to use packages that are currently not recorded in your log file. Here's how that looks. Remember how we used to call lubridate before? Well, if I try to execute this now, it will say, well, there is no package called lubridate. And we have just seen a minute ago, or maybe two, depending on how long I've been talking, we have seen that lubridate was able to load without a problem. And the reason for that is because lubridate is installed globally on my computer as well. And when we didn't use R and R will just take this lubridate version that is installed globally. But now that we have initialized R and R and will tell you, okay, I know these packages, these are the things I know, and I don't know anything else. So that's why when we want to use a new package, even if we might have installed it previously, 
we'll have to use the install function from our end, which works exactly the same like install packages. So you don't have to learn anything new. You just need to remember that instead of using install packages like you normally would, you just use rnf install. And then I could say, okay, please install Lubridate. And now it will ask, okay, the following packages will be installed. I say, yes, let's do that. And then it's doing its thing. And you can see here now that it took a bit to install all of these things, but now I can use library Lubridate. But if I take a look into my log file and try to search for Lubridate, it will tell me that there is no Lubridate recorded here. And if I re-execute this Lubridate call, it will actually work. So this means that RN currently knows the Lubridate package, but it doesn't actually record it in a log file. So what we need to do is to tell RN that, okay, you've installed it. We could use it now. And if it turns out we really need to use this package. Let's also make sure that it is documented. And that's why we can call Lubridate snapshot. And then it will tell you, okay, these packages will now be updated in a log file. Things that were previously not recorded are denoted by a star. And here we'll see that, okay, Lubridate wasn't denoted before and now it's denoted with version 1.9.3. So we tell it that, yeah, please record this. And now if we look for Lubridate, we'll see that, okay, it's in here now. So really the only thing that you have to remember is that if you really want to use a package as part of your code, you also make a snapshot of it so that it is recorded in your log file. Also, the one thing that can be confusing is that snapshot will only put things in the log file that are actually used. For example, if I were to try to execute the here function from the here package, I'd see once again, okay, this doesn't work. So I could once again install this. Let's do that. So yeah, we'll install this. Worked pretty fast. But now if I try to snapshot this, it will tell me, well, the log file is already up to date. And the reason for that is that RNF actually tries to do a really smart thing. It tries to only document the things that you actually need. And as you can see here by the fact that there is this little asterisk in my file name and the font is a little bit lighter than it should be, it means that I haven't actually saved the script yet. So what RNF did was that when I called snapshot, it went through all of the saved files that I currently have in this project and checks what packages do I need to put into the log file. And once again, if it cannot find that you actually use something, it will not try to record this in a log file. But the moment I save my script and then call snapshot again, it will say, okay, the following packages will be updated. And then it's just like before, you just have to say yes and everything will be recorded for you. Now, what if you were to try to use ggplot2 inside of your script, but don't actually install it. If you try to snapshot something, then RNF will tell you, okay, the following packages are not installed, ggplot2. And it will say, okay, first the packages need to be installed before you can snapshot stuff. And then it asks you what you want to do. Snapshot just using the installed things, install the things and then snapshot, or just try to figure out things on your own. Here we can just say, okay, all right, let's just go with the install and then snapshot, and then our end will do everything for us. And we can once again say, all right, thank you. Please record these packages for us now. But really, this is how you can operate our end in your day-to-day -day business when you want to use a specific package inside of your project. But of course, the real strength of our end is that you can bring your packages back to a specific snapshot when you need to. This is particularly useful when you clone some Git repository and there is an rnf log file that will tell you these are the specific versions that we need to use for this code to work. Most of the time when you clone such a project using rnf, then rnf will ask you, hey, I've detected a log file, should I install the packages from there? But if that is ever not the case, then what you can always do is to call the restore function to restore everything back to what is recorded in the log file. So here we can see that if we call rnf restore, everything is already synchronized. So this is why nothing really happened. And the way that works is that we have a directory called rnf in here. And in there we have library directory that has all of the packages as a separate library for this project only installed. But if I would delete this library and then call rnf restore, then rnf will tell me, okay, in our log file, the following packages are installed. I will reinstall them for you. And then it'll say yes. And then everything will be installed for you. You'll see here that I get a warning message, but this is only because I artificially delete the whole library. In practice, you 
probably wouldn't run into this issue here, but you can just ignore it. The point is, if I restart my R session, then everything works as expected, and I can even call RNF status to check that everything is in order. So with that, you have a full overview of how to use RNF in your day-to-day -day business when you want to use specific packages as part of your project. And I've also shown you that with RNF Restore, you can reinstall all of the packages with the correct versions that are specified in the log file. And with that, you should have everything you need to know to work with the RNF package.